Hello. Welcome. Hi, thank you. So the scenario that I understand is that I am a physician and I'm taking care of a patient that's in a vegetative state. And the husband of the patient would like to withdraw the feeding tube. And I'm asked as the patient's physician, what should I do? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. So I would start off with this situation by understanding that this is a very difficult situation. And this is difficult for the patient, um, depending on how much the patient can actually perceive the husband, of course, even the, the healthcare workers that are taking care of the patient. It is a very difficult situation. First, what I'd like to do is talk with the husband and sit down with him and ask him why he wants to pull the feeding tube. I think as healthcare practitioners, we have a lot of assumptions and we may just assume that he wants to pull the feeding tube because he doesn't want her to live this way anymore. Um, however, I don't know that for sure. So I'd like to sit down and talk with him and just kind of figure out why he wants to move the feeding tube. Maybe he doesn't fully understand the implications of it. Um, maybe he can't afford it anymore to keep her on the life support. So I'd like to just talk to with him and make sure that I completely understand his motivations. Um, after talking with him, then of course I would try to address each one of his concerns as best as I possibly could. And um, if I hadn't done so already, I would like to make sure I knew very much about her condition. Um, is there any expected recovery for her? What kind of function does she have? How long has she been on the feeding tube? What else is she dependent on for life support? So that we can make this decision together and we have understanding of each aspect of her care. Um, and after those types of things, I would just try to have a conversation with the husband and try to um, elucidate if she had any wishes or had any, um, if she had spoken of her wishes, if she was ever in a situation like this, or if she has um, written expression of her wishes, like a will or an advanced directive. And then um, I would try to figure out if the husband is the appropriate proxy for her, if she cannot make decisions, who is the person that can make decisions for her, if it is indeed the husband, then I would try to talk through it as much as possible and come to um, a conclusion or a path forward that makes the most sense for the husband, the patient, and anybody else involved in her care. Okay, very good. Let's suppose that um, the husband expression, expresses his wish to withdraw all life support, and then let's say somebody new shows up. Let's say the patient's son uh, shows up and he wants to do the opposite. So the husband wants to withdraw life support. Now the son is saying that you shouldn't draw life support. What would you do in this situation? Yeah, so I understand that this would be a very difficult situation as well. I mean, you're kind of adding another layer to something that's already difficult. Now you have multiple family members that are expressing um, distinct wishes for the patient. So in this case, what I'd like to do is get the son and the husband and myself together all in one room and try to talk about it and um, try to understand why one of them wishes one thing and the other wishes the other. Um, you know, maybe the son had heard his mom express um, something to him that maybe the dad hadn't or vice versa. Um, so I think it's important that they all kind of sit together and discuss their separate wishes and see if there is a way for us to come up with a consensus together. Um, if we're unable to do that, then in that case, I would look for, again, who is her healthcare proxy? Um, who is the one making decisions for her if she can't? Does she have something written, or do we just go to the next of kin, which I believe in most cases is the spouse, but I would have to check. And, um, you know, this is a time too where if I didn't feel experienced enough or if I felt like we were not coming to a consensus together, I may call in some colleagues or the ethics committee or somebody like that in the hospital to help us kind of reach a conclusion and reach a decision that's best for the patient and the family. Okay, very good. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I just, I guess... Um, 
this is just a difficult situation. And I understand that this probably help, happens in healthcare more often than I think. Um, and the job as a physician is to be somebody that is a guide. Um, I don't want to impose my own feelings or my own decision making into the situation. I want to guide and educate the family as much as possible so that they are able to reach an appropriate decision with my guidance and my knowledge. Okay. okay. Would you like to debrief real quickly on how you did on this? Sure. Thank you. So um, I think that a lot of good elements of how you approach this situation is first starting by recognizing the difficulty of the question. None of these questions are black and white. So just starting with the approach of leading with this is a difficult situation recognizes that you really understand what you're getting yourself into. I like that you started by avoiding assumptions. And then probably one of the best tricks you're using with this kind of interview technique is the maybe this, maybe that. And that kind of opens up new scenarios. So you're not just presenting one idea, you're walking yourself through multiple ideas which is good because it expresses a lot of how you're thinking, but it also fills up some of the time that you're talking to. Uh, I like that you um, understand uh, or try to understand the medical problem as well to at least recognizing that you need to know more about the prognosis and the history. And then importantly in this situation, especially, especially ethically speaking, is understanding what her wishes are, like advanced directives and things like that. Um, ultimately, I think you handled the new situation well, too, by reframing uh, the issue that it's now even more difficult than it was to begin with, and the idea that it's not your decision to make, but you're just leading the discussion. So I think all of those elements are really the key to answering these questions. Great. Cool. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a really difficult question, and I think that the point here, again, as I kind of summarized in the end, is as a physician, we never want to interject our own feelings, our own emotions. Our job is to really help guide patients and their families. So I think that's important in this type of situation where you could be have an emotional driven response, but try to leave that aside and just proceed objectively as much as possible. Yeah, great.